Hi, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's session. Um, apologies for a um, slight delay in, uh, in us starting. I was just making sure that the um, darling recordings often running, isn't it? Yep, the recordings often running. If you were with us this morning, sorry, uh, welcome back. And obviously, if you weren't, um, welcome as well. Before we start, can I just uh, draw your attention to the disclaimer on your screens? I know I keep saying this every week, you've seen it all before, but it really is important. This can be a, a very risky business. Please don't even think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. So. Welcome, David. Is I think is typing away. Um, yes, are you okay? You ready, darling? Yes, I'm oh, fine. If you have questions uh, on anything we say or anything that you see, please just put them into the chat box. Um, I'll either answer them as we go along, or maybe we'll uh, we'll keep them for uh, the end of the session. We're just sort of we're fairly flexible about it, and um, you know, we just sort of go with the flow basically. Right, if you've been coming along to this um, series, you will know, you will recognize the slide that's on the um, on the screen at the moment. And those of you who have invested in the Forex program will also recognize it because it's from the technical analysis module of that program. And essentially, it is a very typical price cycle because what we have decided to do in this series, let me just take that close that down, David and I, is to look at the, what we call the price cycle. This is um, based on Wyckoff's second law. And uh, as we can see here to the right, we have an accumulation, we have a buying climax. There's obviously been a fall in uh, uh, this market and it's found a bottom. So we have a, a, a period of congestion while we have accumulation and, and buying before the price starts to rise again. And then we come to the top and we have a distribution and a selling climax and so and so and the and the cycle endlessly repeats and it endlessly repeats in all time frames now if you've not seen this before uh, i'm not going to go through it in the detail that we did in the first and second of our webinars and i would suggest just going over either to my youtube channel or the quantum trading YouTube channel and just watch the first five to ten minutes of the first and second webinars because you will find the explanation of why we're looking at the price cycle and we're looking at the price cycle with respect to um, uh, volume price analysis and also what we call the C states of the market and for the sake of people who've been coming who are coming along regularly it's just a bit tedious to go through the thing in in you know in detail again and again but essentially that is what we are looking at in these webinars and what we looked at last week was the importance of support and resistance support and resistance is a hugely important element of not only volume price analysis but obviously trading per se classical technical analysis now how you measure mark up on your chart if you don't have the quantum indicators, support and resistance, i.e. those levels on the chart where price is either paused, has, uh, uh, has hit a ceiling, or has found a bottom, is very much up to you. This is why we have Fibonacci. This is why we have Camarilla levels. Um, you, as David said in the webinar this morning, you can simply eyeball it. It is a very common sense look at the chart. This is MT5. Uh, the two platforms that we use in these sessions is I just use MT5 now. I don't bother with MT4. And the reason is primarily because I have uh, a much wider choice in uh, time frames than MT4. But if you're with MT4, that's fine as well. The indicators, the quantum indicators are optimized for both MT4 and MT5. And David has Ninja Trader. The support and resistance indicator that we have had developed for the MetaQuotes platform is purely uh, is based on price. And you see it paints these lines on the chart and it tells me instantly um, the thicker lines tell me that the price is at an area of slightly stronger resistance or stronger support, whereas the hatch lines are probably um, that they're, they're weaker, if you like. So when price approaches one of these lines, if it's the solid line, it's going to take a little bit more effort, i.e. it's going to take um, more volume, more activity to actually 
push it through. And the other, the other thing I mentioned this morning about support and resistance, and this was particularly with uh, respect to the gold chart. And again, if you want a fuller explanation, just watch five minutes of what, what I said this morning. And that is when price reaches one of these support um, or uh, resistance levels in certain markets. Oh, what have you got that? What's that then? Hold on. I'm very sorry. I didn't realize that I've you've been talking at my. Um... Ah, how weird is that? I'm so sorry. I do beg your pardon. There's me prattling on, thinking everybody can see what I can see, and you can't actually see my, my screen. I tell you what, can we just change presenters and see if that, for some reason, we have some stickiness in GoToWebinar? Here we are. Let me just change David, because you should have been looking at my. MT5 uh, um, chart. So I do beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Should we change back now and see if it happens? Now we're going to change swap back and see if, as always, you know what it's like with technology. Turn it off and on and hopefully it. Um... Yay. Well, uh, well, I'm blowed. <laughs> One day I'll share with you what David actually said, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> not now, and I'm certainly not going to put it on YouTube. Anyway, uh, <laughs> right, I was saying what I said this morning with regard to support and resistance, in certain markets, when price um, reaches one of these levels, let's call it a psychological level, in particular when we come to, um, I'm talking about the gold chart, and I've written about gold uh, recently, and particularly the 1,200 uh, per ounce level. And it could, and it applies to all sorts of uh, markets. Just gold is a really good example because price has bounced off there in the past. You will always, you will always find buyers waiting to step in. Now, it's partly a reason because, for whatever reason, there is the perception. That twelve hundred dollars uh, an uh, per ounce because it's bounced off five, six, seven times off there in the past. It will automatically do so again. But it also has this thing about fair value that it's cheap, that it's uh, and that almost kind of disregards what the technical picture of the chart is selling, saying, or what even the fundamental picture is saying. And the danger, I suppose, that the flip side of support and resistance is is this: whatever metric you use, whether it's the fact that price has bounced off this price, this psychological level, or you've got a Fibonacci or a Camarilla or what have you, it's very easy to get into a mindset that you say, right, well, when it reaches that level, I am going to be lo I'm looking to sell or I'm going to be looking to buy. And what your brain does, it then looks at the chart and it only looks for that, those confirmation signals that support your belief, if you like. And this is what you have to try and avoid. And I have to say, it's very, very difficult. It is not easy. And this is where your other indicators come in. This is where you, with your knowledge of the price cycle, with your knowledge of the C states, with your other, um, you know, what else is uh, the chart is telling you. You have to detach your belief about, yes, it is going to bounce, uh, bounce off this level. And I have to say, sometimes it does simply because other traders in the market go in with this belief system. So support and resistance, fantastic, but it does have, if you like, a flip side, but it has the other side, particularly when a market approaches these key levels for bounce, for reversals. And if you're a trader, it doesn't really matter because in a way, if you're on the faster time frames, that's great. You, you almost can anticipate what the rest of the market is going to do and you can take advantage of it. It becomes more critical if you are looking to invest, particularly if on stocks or something that you're going to hold for a, any length of time. And then, then you really do have to be aware of the bias that can, uh, that can afflict you simply because a uh, um, a stock, say, reaches a certain level and you don't pay enough attention to um, whether it is actually in an accumulation phase and it's actually likely to move up. You've simply gone in and said, yep, 
it's, that's the level I'm looking to buy. I think it's cheap and I'm going to buy regardlessly, regardless. So what I'm looking at the moment here is the dollar Canadian because the dollar Canadian, particularly the Canadian, comes into play very much as the US session uh, starts. And in fact, I've been looking at um, a little move here. It's uh, on the three minute chart and on the Renko. And what the Renko chart here, this is the one for MT4. As we see here, if we have a if we have a scaled down version of what we were looking at on the schematic. We had a, a, a nice little move lower. We had this, this sideways price action, which is clearly marked by the pivots pivots are also are an indicator that will you know give us the range we've got a support and resistance indicator and then we have this little run up and now you know we we have the run up a pullback a further run up and now we're looking to see whether in fact it is going to continue uh, the downward uh, the downward trend and we use our um, CSI, a currency strength indicator and what I'm particularly interested in is the Canadian this is the hour it's falling and uh, falling, falling. So we'll see if that's actually going to turn up uh, later on in the session. So I'm just going to keep an eye on uh, the dollar CAD. I'm going to pass over to David because we really want to look at Ninja and we want to uh, look at other markets other than Forex. But there's lots of lessons on this particular uh, um, um, the profile that I'm looking at at the moment to do with SNR. So I'll come back to you and it's about time I shut up and let David have a, a say. Thanks, darling. And um, bang on cue. The uh, US market is now getting underway. I just, just closed the chat box out of the way. Um, I'll just switch over to my screens. Uh, where are we? There we go. Make myself a presenter. There we go. Show my screen. That should be coming up any minute now. Yep, I can just see over on Anna's over on his shoulder. It's come up. Sorry, I've just got this is the NQ just running on um, on tick. Just running on the tick speed. Let me just. Uh, Let's go back to a conventional chart for a moment, just on the NQ. There we go, just on a time-based uh, time-based horizon, just to slow it down a bit. The reason I pulled this up was because um, I mean the NQ has been fantastic. It has been extremely volatile, but from a trading perspective, just amazing. I mean, yesterday was a great, great trading day, and today we've seen the reversal, and this is what we're seeing all the time. The reason I pulled this up is just twofold. Um, the, this is the NQ. This is the September contract for uh, the futures contract for the NASDAQ 100. <clears throat> uh, the reason the profile, the volume profile is um, so different at the bottom is because this is the phase of price action where we are trading with both the electronic and the cash markets open or the, the real physical exchange, if you will. Whereas the the rest of this period is trading in Globex, it doesn't invalidate volume price analysis. All it means is that volume is all comparative, and when you go from session to session, as we have done here and as we are literally doing right now, then clearly the volume is that much different when you have the two running together, where you have the physical exchange running with the electronic. It just means that you can't compare the volume on a one minute candle at 2.31, uh, sorry, at 14.31 our time, in other words, half past two uh, UK time, one minute later with a candle one minute earlier because the session is entirely different in the context of the number of players involved. So that is why the volume profile is very different. But if you step back to where are we, the Renko, this is the Renko for this is for the YM, but it would be just the same for the NQ. This is trading since half past eight UK time. It's been fantastic trend upwards. That's 8.30. This is where we are now, 14.31 UK time. And that is the sort of move that uh, we're seeing at the present, the reversal from yesterday. Very strong move supported by the indicators and support and resistance works in exactly the same way on a Renko chart as it does indeed on a time-based chart. And it all, it all strikes me as odd that people who say, oh, well, you can only trade these markets 
uh, particularly uh, indices, for example, which is where we started 20 years ago. You can only trade these markets when both market, when both uh, physical and the uh, electronic are running in parallel, which is a load of hogwash, uh, which I hope this makes the point. But just to go back to that chart again, this is the NQ on 30 minute. The reason I wanted to just highlight it is because it does indicate the, the importance of support and resistance and how these levels build. The, the way that we develop indicators is to dry and build them so that they are giving information in the price action and close to the price action because that's where you want to see it. So you tend not to get a lot of levels further away from the price action. The regions of support and resistance will tend to be within the price action because that's where you want to see it. And if you have a piece of price action where perhaps you don't have support and resistance levels, either on the Ninja Trader accumulation distribution indicator of this one or on the MT45, which was a question that came up this morning, then that really goes to the heart of trading because trading is about multiple time frames. And the same applies to support and resistance. So if you're looking for areas of support and resistance in a slower time frame, then it's just a question of moving up to those time frames. Normally, of course, you'd have multiple charts up. We just operate with very simple charts here because it's easier from a presentation approach. You can see things more easily rather than have loads of charts crammed on the screen. But normally you would be looking at this uh, with several different charts open and that would display all the various support and resistance levels. But if I step this down, I'll show you in a minute uh, what I mean. So here we are, we're building in this region, the support and resistance, this is the accumulation distribution. It's setting these levels, it's based on price action, nothing else, it's purely looking at where they're blue, where a price has been tested from above and how often and hence they're displayed in this much deeper uh, width of support and the red ones are where price has approached from below and tested in other words building resistance and the two obviously then rotate when you move through them they become one becomes support and the other one becomes resistance etc etc in the normal conventional way but the thickness of the line also demonstrates how strong that particular area of uh, support or resistance is on the chart the other thing about these uh, levels is that a lot of indicators that describe these regions are very broad. You'll find them with a very wide range of support and resistance. And what we've always done is these are pinpoint. I mean, these are to the nearest point, which is unusual, but that's the way we've designed them. And when these levels are approached, you've always got to remember that one has to be a little bit flexible in terms of support and resistance. They are not concrete walls. They're not absolute firm uh, lines of brickwork or lines of concrete where you can expect the price just to hit absolutely bang on. You will see this. You will see them penetrate through, penetrate through. The same here. We've penetrated through. We've building, we're starting to build a minor level above this very solid area here. And from a trading perspective, then if we're trading this particular time horizon, and this could be a one minute or it could be a one month, makes absolutely no difference from the technical approach. The trend monitor is telling us that for the time being, we're remaining in, in bullish sentiment. We've got a slight transition to a darker blue here because we've had this congestion phase building. But from a trading perspective, if you're looking to trade a breakout or a breakaway, then what you're looking for here is a move away from one of these regions, either a move through here with strong volume or move through here with strong volume. And the other point I made about support and resistance is not just about the trading aspect of it in terms of looking for those areas that are going to be breached. It also comes into play when you start to look at, first of all, the potential opportunity that that position you're going to take in the market might deliver. So if you see very little in the way of support and resistance up and down the chart, where you're looking for a potential trading opportunity, then that is helping you make that decision. In other words, if you see clear water from a, a trading perspective in terms of support and resistance, then you can analyze that position and consider it one where you might look at it and think, well, actually, I've got 
you know quite a decent amount of travel here before I'm starting to hit some some more potential resistance or more potential support and I'm prepared to take that risk so that's one aspect to it the other aspect to it of course is in terms of stop positioning and stop placement if you're trading in a range like this let's suppose this breaks to the upside you might be looking to put your stop below this level here because you've got this very strong uh, level of uh, potential uh, support in the way should the market reverse against you equally to the upside if the market breaks to the downside you might be looking to put your stop loss behind this barrier here these are very substantial barriers uh, they're not uh, indestructible but they're certainly substantial and again it's another way of using these regions of support and resistance first of all to identify and try and get a handle on what you think is the trading potential for the opportunity you're about to take in the market and secondly to give you some guidance as to where to position any stop loss to give you the greatest protection in the event of any pullback now of course where you put your stop loss will be governed by your money management rules now putting it up here may well be too rich for you uh, too too much you don't want to take that much risk you have to look low down maybe you go down to a faster time frame if you go down to the 15 minute for example let's just flick down uh, and again of course as always when you change time frames you're getting different perspective on things we're seeing volatility indicator triggered so we know there's volatility in the market it's no great surprise there's often volatility as the markets open up in real time again you can see here this gives us another perspective we've got this very very strong platform of support we've got two levels of it we've got one here this was tested uh, from above six times and held this was tested eight times from above and held so it's got two very solid levels there if you're on mt4 mt5 what we've designed there is that you've got either dotted lines for uh straight support and resistance levels or you've got solid lines which designate stronger areas of support and resistance so again a very similar sort of principle if we go back down onto five let's see what's going on, on five this is coming right down to the coal face now and this is obviously the volatility that's going on this is invariably what happens at the open of uh, certainly in terms of the u.s indices get this racking about you can see the ton of volume that's come in under that particular candle and this is all the volume that preceded it on globex it doesn't invalidate it it just means you can't compare this candle with this candle because you're in a different session you have to treat these sessions as entirely different in many ways it's the same as when you move through a forex session when you move through from the far east into europe and london they are different sessions liquidity is much deeper participation is much higher in london and therefore you can't compare as you move through those periods you cannot compare the volume that is coming through at eight o'clock uk time or to some extent european seven o'clock time with what has gone on in asia because you're not comparing like with like you've always got to compare apples with apples and not apples with pears just go right down to the one minute just for another perspective there we go and then you get all these different levels coming in which are giving you higher levels levels below etc etc and you just start to build up a picture and that of course you would have that on your on your screens with multiple screens you'd have all these charts running giving you all this information this is just whipsaw back and forth back and forth no direction at the moment not something you'd want to be trading and let's just have a look at it on the where are we got it on the Renko here sorry we're on the YM here this is the YM um, this is uh, a, the the why what's interesting at the moment is that if you look at the three primary indices of the the S&P the uh, Dow and the Nasdaq on occasion you'll see days when the the three of them are actually diverging where you've got maybe bearish sentiment on one and bullish on another it's very unusual but it it, it does seem to be happening at the moment uh, the other effect we're seeing quite often now is we're seeing the Nasdaq leading the way with quite big moves and the others not so much, certainly in terms of the YM. The YM is, is a much more uh, even paced uh, index to trade as opposed to certainly the NQ and, and top, of the, top of the tree is the ES in terms of volatility. So what we're seeing here is uh, some not quite so much volatility in terms of the YM. If I just, uh, I can change this over. Actually, I'll leave it on the NQ for the time being. 
let me just switch off for a moment. Just going to see if Anna's got uh, any are any questions. Okay. Okay. Let's just see what's happening on that's the that's the dollar CAD that was uh, that was going up nicely, um, largely being driven by um, the Canadian, um, and in fact on on the CSI that's reflected there. That's what we were seeing there, this heavy selling of the Canadian. And that's what was driving it because the dollar was also falling in tandem with it. This is on a 15 minute time horizon. But that's, that weakness in the Canadian dollar was enough to drive momentum into the pair, even though the dollar was traveling in the same direction. Just head over to, these are the, uh, this is the dollar index. Just bear with me a moment. Apologies. Um, this is the uh, the dollar index. This is on five minute time horizon. At the top, we've got the euro dollar, which is, uh, as you would expect, is rising, and this is the dollar which is uh, falling on a, a fast time frame basis. So that's where the dollar is right now. If we go to the euro, just see what's going on in the euro. Euro is climbing as well. So in terms of euro dollar, you've got both the effect of of uh, positivity towards the euro and negativity towards the dollar. Finally, over to the yen index. Not really going anywhere at the moment. Uh, we saw some, uh, this is on 15 minute now, we saw some uh, some reasonable selling of the yen overnight and into the morning, but it's been in congestion phase ever since. So we haven't seen much in the way of strength or weakness in terms of the yen pairs particularly. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass back to Anna for a moment. I just wanted to check that David could actually see my screen this time. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. As I said, I said I was uh, going to keep an eye on the on the dollar Canadian, and um, not necessarily because I want to talk, you know, as as a forex, uh, particularly from a forex perspective, but just to show you, uh, pick up on some of the things that um, David mentioned. This this move into this crossover uh, sessions, and that's regardless of whether it's Globex or for Forex, we have the uh, we have the three sessions at London and Europe, and now we've got London, Europe, and New uh, New York. And this is the eight-hour chart, so you can see this actually can this candle. It's got it's uh, says 1600. It's actually two o'clock hour time. So the candle previously showed the uh, the rise in in the U.S. dollar. This nice move higher uh, for the dollar CAD, and now as soon as you know we flipped over to uh, New York. We've had a, a a reversal in sentiment, but to get back to um, these multiple time frames, it's probably easier to look at them from uh, and on the MT5 platform. So what I have here is yes. I do have my currency strength indicator, which tells me what the individual currencies are doing, what's being bought, what's being sold. And I can see here, this is the red line, this is the US dollar, this is going and this is uh, moving lower. And the purple line is the Canadian. And this is actually being reflected and we can see the move moving uh, now quite strongly. I've got a three minute chart here. I'm gonna talk about support and resistance. We had this resistance here at uh, the R2. And this is the move that um, I have been tracking. If we look at it from the perspective of uh, the Renko, again, we have the uh, resistance here at 31.58. Uh, We've developed the trend dots here, and these are very, very close to the price action. And you can almost, you can almost use them. And I say almost, not they're not going to be categorical about it. Is when they change, when they move into into the colour. Uh, red for um, uh, a bearish trend and blue for um, a bullish trend, and we have an in, we have a grey which is 
tends to appear in congestion. You can almost say, yeah, they, and if they carry on lower and lower, and we've got a tail on the end of this, of this candle telling us that there's also some volatility coming in. Now, I'm actually comparing my three minute chart with my hourly, and I have my hourly here. And in fact, what's happened on this candle is this little purple, uh, these purple dots have, uh, have appeared, and that is a volatility indicator, which tells me that in this move lower, um, it's outside of the average true range for this particular, in this particular time frame. But look at the uh, support region, which is 31.25. It's, it's, a, it's a solid line, so I've got volatility. I'm going to have momentum. I'm also pulling away. I've gone through the volume point of control. The volume point of control is volume, time, and price. It's a very, very important region on the, on the chart, both from support and resistance, but it has volume. It tells me um, it's, the, it's the fulcrum of the chart. It's where the price has stayed for a period of time. And all these things, all these things that are, are, are now appearing on my chart, I can see the um, I can see the volume rising. What I don't like to see, if I am trading a faster time frame and I see volatility indicator triggered on the slower time frame, my the, the time frame that I'm comparing it with, is what I don't like to see is because after volatility, when you have a sudden spike in price, sometimes caused by fundamental news, but at this time of the year, it's also because there's low liquidity. Um, it's just a seasonal factor, and that is also the reason for a lot of fake outs that you get, at, as I said, in, in, the, in the summer months. I don't like to see that on a slower time frame because what that tells me is that I can expect the likelihood is the price is going to retreat within the spread of the candle. And I can see on the three minute chart that immediately I've had a really nice uh, down candle with, you know, a reasonable amount of volume. But because I've got this unexpected volatility coming in, what in it's like an elastic band, it snaps back as it were. Now, that's what I've seen on the slower time frame. Does that mean this is not going to carry on lower? No, it's simply a heads up. And where this price is looking to go to is is the S1 here, which is at 31.26. So I'm um, in this downtrend. I see volatility coming in on my slower time frame. I can now make it, I can now uh, uh, take a decision. I can say, do you know what? I don't like dealing with volatility. I don't like uh, this sudden uh, um, momentum that's come into the market. I think I can close out. But I look at my Renko. I look at my I, I look at my CSI. I see the dollar is still falling uh, quite strongly, and this is still falling strongly. It doesn't look as though the um, the, the retreat into the spread of the candle, certainly on the on the faster time frame, is you know can I is it time to to bail out? But that's a personal decision, and. As David said, looking at the support and resistance or the accumulation and distribution, they give you a kind of objective of where we think the price is going to go. But be aware, but I am very keenly aware that, as I said, on my one hour chart, I've been trading around the volume point of control. I've now got this volatility come in and, you know, I'm not sure. And if I'm not sure, just get out. If you're in doubt, get out. There's no shame. There's no, you shouldn't beat yourself up about, oh, you know, looking back and say, oh, I should have stayed in. I should, because if we look back to this chart here, we had a volatility candle uh, here and it shot up. And then it, we had another volatility candle and it, you know, possibly it did retreat within the spread of that candle, but there was enough oomph in there to take it up. And we can see that from the volume here, the volume underneath that candle even greater volume under here, but on the second volatility candle, the price did actually retreat and we've had this little sort of downward move and into sideways congestion. So it'd be very interesting to see what happens on this particular chart. Now, this happens to be the dollar CAD. It could be anything. It could be a stock. It could be an index. Um, it could be on the uh, slow, slowest time frame or it could be on the fastest time frame. So let's see what happens there.
Thanks, darling. Uh, while uh, while Anna was talking, I've just actually migrated over to the YM and changed all these charts over because what's interesting at the moment, and it really reflects what I was saying earlier on, that um, the I'm just going looking at the Renko while I'm talking. There we go. Um, this is now the YM. This is the derivative. This is the futures contract for um, the Dow 30. It's a much more even paced index. And um, what's interesting is that whilst there's been severe volatility in the NASDAQ, that's not been reflected in terms of the YM. And if I take that over to, there we go, this is on 15. Again, you come back to the levels. We had these levels here where we had a, a congestion phase. We've got this very strong level of uh, potential support. It acted as a support and it held there up through these regions. Now we're breaking on higher. Now in these higher levels, we've not got any levels uh, particularly. So we want to go up, go up to the 30 maybe, see what we've got there. We've got a lot of volatility coming in on the 30 minute candle, go up to the 60. <clears throat> Still no levels there. And you would go higher and higher. Uh, into whatever, you know, a two hour or four hour to discover those levels in the higher time frames, in the slower time frames to find out potentially where this is taking us to. As I say, normally you would have that done per se because you'd have multiple windows open all the time. You can see the volume, this dramatic increase in volume as we've opened up the market. And this is Globex over here. Pretty bullish throughout. I only had a blip on the trend monitor here. We didn't actually go through to uh, bright red. And it's just a function of, Anna mentioned the trend dots, which have worked very, very closely to the price action. And they work really, really well with the Renko, as you can see here. You get these transitional phases into the transitional gray, back out again into the uh, bearish, uh, bullish uh, blue. And down here, we have a transitional into the red phases here. But what you see in terms of the trend monitor is a much more considered change. It changes less frequently and it changes at a slower rate. You can adjust all these indicators by adjusting the sensitivity. So if you want to um, really take a view where the trend monitor transitions more fully into the trend, in other words, it comes in a little bit later rather than a little bit early, you can do that. It's like the fine tuning control on a, on a volume control, if you will. Um, but what the trend monitor is designed to do is to try and hold you through those phases of price action where you've got uncertainty and doubt. For example, through here, it's not clear at this point, you know, is the market going to break down or are we going to carry on in the bullish in the in the bullish trend? What's going to happen? We're looking at the levels. We're looking at different time frames, looking at other indicators. The trend monitor transitions into that darker blue, but it doesn't go to darker red. Um, or indeed, sometimes it, it does go through from dark, from dark blue into bright red. But on this occasion, it didn't just transition there. And it's one of the hardest things to do to stay in a position when it starts to move into a congestion phase or starts to reverse against you. That is the hardest thing to do in trading bar none. Unfortunately, it's the one thing that defines whether you ultimately are able to move forward in terms of P&L. Because if you're constantly taking small losses, which we all do, but that is also offset with taking small wins at the same time, then probably what is going to happen is your account will start to slide backwards. Not, a, not at a particularly fast rate, but it will start to move, move south somewhat because the prospect is you're taking more small losses than you are taking small wins. And that's the issue. And it's the issue of, of holding a position through a trend, maintaining it through the congestion phase and on up to the next level. Because there's nothing worse than coming out, you've taken your profit, and then you know it develops thereafter. It happens all the time. It happens to us, for goodness sake. You know, It's easy with hindsight to look at a chart and say, oh, I should have held it all the way up there. Not so easy to do it in practice. And that's what the trend monitor is designed to do. Let's just go back over here onto the time chart. We're on five minutes still. Decent volume pushing this up. And in fact, if I just change this over to the NQ, it'll be interesting to see what the NQ is doing simultaneously. <clears throat> Horrible. That's the difference. Normally, you would expect to see the indices pretty much following one another around. You know, if they're bullish, the bullish, bearish, bearish, congestion, fine. 
that's what you're seeing right now. Tremendous volatility in the NQ. Um, I don't know what earnings we've got coming out. You know, big stocks like you know Facebook and and stocks of that nature will have a huge impact on the on the index sufficient enough to actually move it in the opposite direction to perhaps the primary trends of the others. But that's what you're seeing right now in terms of the NQ, and what you're seeing in terms of the YM is almost the polar opposite of that in in virtually every dimension. There's no volatility. It's a nice, relatively even, steady trend higher. Not particularly scary. Trend monitors blue. We've got uh, the trend line rising, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just hop over onto the tick speed. This is uh, on the tick speed. This is uh, on the tick chart here. This is the YM on tick. I've got it on the 377 tick here, and pretty much the same same situation. You've got um, again. You can see the levels here. I've stripped everything else off, so I've just got the the levels on on here, um, and you can see them there quite clearly on that particular tick chart just see what speed we're running at 377 okay if i want to change that to the actual i can just change it 366 we'll go to the 366 see if that makes any difference not huge and um it, if i put the nq on here you would see a very 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 different picture sorry i always have my chat box closed david um Three or three contracts. Get out the first quickly with some pips. Um, yeah. Then move. Set another profit level. So cashing in third. Right. Fantastic. I I delighted you post that, David. Thank you. Um, I assume everyone else can read that. Um, but that is a, a, a classical way of trading where you take a position with the prescribed number of contracts. David said three there. Once you've got a little bit of profit, you take that and bank it and you run the other two. It's a it's a very classic way. It's called scaling out. So you start with a number of contracts and that can be either a number of contracts or it could be a number of micro lots, for example, or full lots or mini lots, whatever it is. So in the pit in the spot forex world, you might go in with say three micro lots or three mini lots and gradually take those off the table as a position develops. Uh, in the index world, it's it's points. In um, commodities, it's uh, dollars, dollars and cents, and so on and so forth. That's scaling out. The alternative to that is where you scale in, where you start with one, the position develops, and you add another one, and then perhaps a further one on top of that if the position continues to build in your direction. It's all about building positions in the market. There are pros and cons for both approaches, scaling in and scaling out you have to find what you're comfortable with some people are comfortable with scaling out some people are more comfortable with scaling in i can't tell you which would work for you you just have to find out what works for you but i can tell you one thing once you start to broach trading in that way you've actually taken your trading to another level because when it we and we all start in the same way we all start with with a single contract or a single position whatever that may be and we then watch that position like hawk and we go through all the emotional turmoil of ups and downs along the way and close it out and shoot on to the next one. When you start to develop as a trader, once you've done this for a few years, then that is when you start to bring in these more nuanced and more elegant ways of trading, which help to uh, define you as a trader and also define your progress as a trader, if you will, because these are not simple things to deal with um, and you have to be comfortable in, in the approach you're taking to trading and you know that's how you learn and, and as Anna said this morning we get so angry that the marketing hype in this industry which says you know learn to trade in four hours and all that sort of crap um, it's it's you know it's just total nonsense this is this is a tough business there's a lot of learning to be done, not only learning about yourself and all the psychology, but learning about how the markets work, but also finding what your comfort level is and what you're comfortable doing. And that is precisely one of them, which is thank you, David. I, I appreciate your comment. I've just seen your comment come up there. So um, we can't we can never say to to people who are on our education program, we can only lay out the foundations and say, look, these are the foundations, these are the founding principles of trading. 
um, you buy into VPA or you don't, you know, that's cool, that's up to you. Or maybe you want to blend it with something else, that's cool as well. Um, but you've got to find your own place in the market and you have to find what works for you and what you're comfortable with. So there's no right or wrong way. You can be a scalping trader, you can be a trend or swing trader, whatever it is, longer and shorter time frames. Uh, narrow down the markets you trade, trade one market, trade one instrument, if you will, trade one instrument with one particular tactical approach. These are all, or you become a, a master of, uh, of, of several different approaches and you trade a, a variety, or you trade every single market that's going. There's no right or wrong way, it's just whatever suits you. David says there he's, he's in his third year. Um, you've done well, David, you know, persevering. That's what it's about. It's hard. It is graft. It is learning. And some of it is painful. And as long as you learn from those mistakes, then, you know, it, it's there. We have people who've, who've emailed us privately and who we've met privately, who've been on the program, known us for some time, and they are doing really, really well. But they will be the first to admit this is not a quick get rich fix. This takes time and effort and graft and hard work. Appreciate your comments, David. I'm just going to pass back to Anna. I don't want to uh, rabbit on too long about that. Just to make sure David can see it. And really, what I said earlier about the volatility that came into the hourly uh, uh, chart for the uh, dollar Canadian, as we can see here, uh, that was the first heads up that the um, uh, there was a you know there was something going on, and in fact there's been some buying. You've got this wick to the bottom of the candle, and you've also got a, a reasonable amount of volume as well. But from a support and resistance perspective, because we're trading in the volume point of control and this is where as i said this is this is a hugely important um uh, price point for this particular instrument uh, why because it's almost like the fulcrum of this chart um our vpoc our volume point of control has got elements of market profile in it so as you can see here from this uh, from this histogram um there's a it's dense. There's a lot of um, uh, transacted volume. Yes, there have been possibilities of, of taking uh, positions both to the upside and uh, to the downside. But what keeps happening all the time is the price keeps going back to this fulcrum, as it were. It really can't decide whether to move away to the upside or the downside. Now, whether there is a trade in the range that this um, that uh, this happens to be the dollar cad is trading. You can only make that decision by looking at what is going on in the faster time frames, which is why we have uh, down here on the three minute chart. This is this little pullback that we've seen here. Now, what's happened on the three minutes is it's run bang onto the VPOC on the three minute chart. So again, we have uh, a density of uh, transacted volume. Is this going to continue lower? Well, we've seen all the volatility indicator does is tell us something is up. If we look at the um, uh, the Renko, when I said about the change in the uh, the trend dots, we have the red, the red, we've had grey, we've had our first blue. If you had taken this trade to the downside, you'd say, right, well, I think this is this is actually going to be a reversal. I'm happy. I'm going to come out. Or you could say, well, I'm now looking to trade to the opposite side. I want to take a trade to the long side. What am I going to wait for in terms of uh, the dot itself? Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's look at what is happening on the time chart. And the time chart, where are you going to go run into if it's going to go higher? It's going to run into here. Why? Because it's a very important uh, uh, point on the chart. It's high density of volume. And in fact, because this works in real time, it's now dropped down. I hope you saw that. That's actually quite positive because it means that, you know, maybe there's some oomph behind this move to go to the upside. Now, David actually mentioned the dollar index. Now, I have the dollar index here. 
actually as the dollar index here we are which is the this is the 30 minute this is uh, the dixie and we actually had volatility on the 30 this was a little pullback that we've had inside but it looks like it wants to carry on lower it's actually on a uh, quite a strong support line at the moment 96.21 it went through it push straight back uh, uh, back the other way. So if it's going to go lower, what does it have to do? It's got to break 20, 96.21. Where's it going to go after that? Well, 96.12. So th this is how, this, you know, how you would look at using support and resistance to, to help build the narrative of what is going on in the chart and what is likely to be happening, what is going to happen next. And of course, looking at the volume which has to validate what you are seeing on the chart you have to see participation under here now what is interesting this all this is the three minute chart this is sort of an average line this is our tick uh, indicator and we are in the deepest liquidity you know this is the big the, the, um, participation we've got traders from three financial centers and you would think we would have lots of you know that line should be somewhere down there. Normally it is on this occasion, but it's, you know, it's still reasonable. Now we're building higher. There we are. And let's go on the Renko and you say, yep, maybe that's going to be an opportunity to the other side. And getting back to the three minute chart, I said, you know, you can use Fibonacci. Traders will put a, a, a fib from here to here. I've got this uh, Camarilla. I've got the S1 and I've got the R1. This is actually what we call a buffer zone. It's like a, it's got the VPOC in it as well. And we could actually bounce around in this region. So if we wanted to look for a much stronger trend and you think, no, you know, I, I know what is likely to happen when price is in a this what, what I call the buffer zone. It's really got to go over the R3 or certainly down below the S1. It's you know, the information is there, the bits of the jigsaw are there. How you want to, but unlike a jigsaw that has one picture, you can put these together and you can decide how you want to play uh, what you are seeing on the chart. As I said, there is no one way to approach this. Is it really, is you, it's trial and error. You have to, you have to discover for yourself what suits you? Do you like trading the three-minute chart, or do you prefer to look at a um, at a slower time frame? Do you like to use the Renko? It's all up for grabs, and it's all very much down to you. And it takes time. It takes time to discover how the market works, what drives the market, and finally, what is actually going to work for your personality. We have, we're just coming up to uh, the hour. We, this session is, we'd like to keep them for now because the, it makes the videos um, uh, awfully long. But before I go, can I just have a look? Here we are. Where are we? Here we are. Right. Okay. First of all, I need to thank you very much for coming along and spending some time with us uh, this afternoon. David and I really do enjoy. We love looking at charts. We love explaining charts. We love answering questions and we love developing indicators. And we've looked at support and resistance today, but we're going to be looking at non-time based charts next week. We've got all sorts of things that we want to cover in this series of webinars. Now, if you've not come across the indicators before, they are from quantumtrading.com. Um, you've seen them, they're both for NinjaTrader and, uh, and for MT4 and MT5, but we are developing other platforms. We'll be looking at TradingView and we're also going to be looking at TradeStation, particularly because we're going to be moving more into stocks. Now, the way from a, a purchasing perspective, you can buy one indicator. We have what we call discounted bundles or we have a complete package of indicators you when you buy either one a bundle or the full package it's a lifetime license and in that license you get all three 
upgrades both to the platforms and the indicators and we also operate a seven day no question asked money back guarantee we include 24 7 support and yes we are working 365 uh, days of the year and if you want to change from platform to platform you're more than welcome to do so it's it's free if you move from mt4 to ninja there is a slight difference in price if you invest in the full package all future indicators are added to your package for free so however many indicators we have at the moment and we're developing and modifying them all the time you will get them for free and obviously if you buy one or bundle and you you know you want to upgrade you always get a credit and the cost is it's 894 for mt4 mt5 or 1197 for ninja trader and you can buy them on the easy payment plan with regard to the education we talk about our forex program this is from our sister site quantum trading education this is actually us this is where we are at the moment um, all the details are at quantum trading education uh, details of the modules and the cost of the program is 1391 for mt4 mt5 1694 for ninja trader and a ninja to seven or eight but the price includes the full suite of indicators so that's it that's not the pro that's not just for the education i think the education only comes in at something like five hundred dollars and again you've got epp option there as well and on the program there's about 50 hours plus video video podcasts and 13 pdf downloads and the uh, information is at quantumtradingeducation.com. You're more than welcome to drop me a line, Anna at anacooling.com, or for the indicators help desk at quantumtrading.com. David, is there anything? No. Okay. And yes, the replay link, uh, the best place is just, just to go to the YouTube channel. I haven't put the up here. It's if you type in quantum trading YouTube channel, Anna, Co Anna Cooling YouTube, you'll find recordings there. David is waving goodbye. Anything else, darling? That's it. Thank you so much for coming along. Really, as I said, it's been a, it's been a pleasure having you and we will see you next time. Take care.